What happens if you take a deep image of the universe with two of the best telescopes in space and then combine the results to create one massive image? Well, this. JWST and the Hubble Space Telescope have combined their powers to image an enormous galaxy cluster called Max 0416. The result is a vivid, colourful landscape of the most amazing shapes and shocks. Let's delve into the image, look at some of the most impressive gems hidden in the darkness, and try to understand exactly what we're looking at. The Hubble Space Telescope imaged this cluster back in 2014 as part of a project called Frontier Fields, in which it was looking at some of the youngest and faintest galaxies that it could see. The much newer and bigger JWST has now taken this to the next level, with its powerful and incredibly sensitive infrared instruments able to see even deeper into the universe and spot previously unknown galaxies that are even fainter and further away than we could see with Hubble. In fact, Max 0416 is a pair of massive galaxy clusters in the process of colliding 4.3 billion light years away. In total, the cluster has a mass of about 160 trillion times the mass of our sun and a diameter of around 200 kiloparsecs, which is a massive 652,000 light years. However, the true majesty of the image doesn't come from the galaxy cluster itself. That's shown in the centre of the image, in the yellowy, puffy regions. Instead, the amazing thing here is all of the galaxies that we can see behind the cluster. They are much more distant and intrinsically much fainter, but are visible here thanks to a powerful effect called gravitational lensing. This is the incredibly large mass of the cluster bending space-time itself, which allows the light from more distant galaxies to take bent and warped paths through space to reach us. This can have two effects on that light. Firstly, it magnifies it, allowing us to see objects that are very, very distant and very dim, but they get magnified by the cluster between us and them. Secondly, it can distort the shapes we see. That's what these streaks are. They're galaxies that, in reality, have the regular spiral and elliptical shapes that typical galaxies do have, but their light is being distorted before it reaches us, warping them into strange, elongated shapes. The same effect can actually be seen with glass, for example in a wine glass. This can warp and magnify light and shapes, causing them to look strange to us. It's the same here, except the medium doing the warping is space-time itself, rather than glass. I do have other videos where I go more into the details of gravitational lensing, so please feel free to take a look at those if you're interested using the links in the description or in the card up here. In this video though, let's focus on what we're looking at in this image of Max 0416. I think the first obvious thing is the vivid colours in the image. This has come about from the fact that we're combining visible light observations from Hubble with infrared observations from JWST, giving us much more data than our human eyes can actually see. We can't see infrared light like JWST can, so we have to map that infrared light onto visible colours here. The longest wavelengths, as seen by JWST, are mapped to the reddest colours, and the shortest wavelengths of visible light that are seen by Hubble are mapped to the bluer colours, and the in-between wavelengths are mapped to the rainbow of yellows, oranges and greens. In fact, down here you can see all the colours used and the exact wavelengths they were assigned to. The numbers in these codes tell us the wavelengths in thousandths of microns. So, for example, this shade of blue represents data seen with a wavelength of 0.814 microns. This huge range of the electromagnetic spectrum being mapped to these colours results in these incredibly bright and vibrant colours, and it's just amazing to see it like this. The colours tell us things about the galaxies too. For example, bluer galaxies are typically closer to us and often show intense star formation. These are best seen by Hubble in visible light, while JWST is better at seeing the redder galaxies. These are typically more distant, with their light being redshifted by the expanding universe to the redder colours that JWST is sensitive to. Although some nearby galaxies can also appear red if they contain a lot of space dust, which tends to absorb bluer colours of light much better than it absorbs red colours, giving those galaxies a red appearance, as those wavelengths of light can escape. We can actually see the separate images taken by the two telescopes as well. So feel free to pause here and compare the two if you want to search for the differences. 
If we fade from Hubble into the JWST image, you can see how many more objects become visible, and how much brighter and more detailed many of the dim objects in the Hubble image become too. The other awesome thing is all of the beautiful galaxies, and the crazy shapes that we get to see in one of the most comprehensive views of the universe that we've ever had. Firstly, we have these long thin streaks. These are entire galaxies being stretched out into long thin shapes. This is similar to galaxies we've talked about before in the El Gordo cluster, but I think there might be even more thin ones in this new image. Some of the long streaks look pretty symmetrical too. For example here we can see the same bright spots repeating in the same order. My guess is that this is actually two images of the same galaxy appearing on the sky reflected. Although to be honest I can't find any sources to back up this thought. So if you know more about this than me, please leave me a comment down below to let me know if this really is what's going on. The bright spots that we can see in the streaks are likely to be bright globular clusters of stars being magnified too, although it can be possible to even see individual stars in streaks like these. Again, I haven't yet found any references to tell me if there are any of those stars in these galaxies, but it has happened before so it's definitely possible. And in fact, the most distant star we've ever seen, called Arendelle, was spotted exactly in this way. In the background, we can see many more examples of highly lensed galaxies, or just incredible looking galaxies in the far, far universe, many billions of light years away. <laughs> many billions of light years away. I don't know why I said billion like that. I'm showing some of my favourites on screen now, but if you have a favourite too, then please do let me know which one it is. I particularly like this pair of galaxies that look like they're interacting. This highly lensed system is really cool, and all of these incredibly beautifully structured and coloured galaxies. I really could keep looking for these all day. The exact lensing effects we can see also help us map out the mysterious dark matter in the cluster too. That's been done before, and here we're seeing a map that shows us where that dark matter is in the cluster, overlaid on the Hubble image we've just seen. One of the specific goals of the research this image has come from is to take data of the cluster several times and use this to identify objects that vary or flicker over time. So far, the teams involved have already spotted 14 of these so-called transients, with 12 of them spotted in three highly lensed galaxies. It's likely the lensing effects themselves that cause this flickering and specific interactions causing stars or star systems to become even more magnified. The other two transients were seen in closer galaxies that were less magnified and are currently thought to have been supernova explosions. Unfortunately, I don't think I can spot all of them in this one single image, but maybe one day we'll get to see all of those images and compare them and look for those transients ourselves. One of them though has been pointed out to us. It's been nicknamed Mothra, thanks to the monstrously large magnification that it's experiencing. It appears at least 4,000 brighter than it is in reality, and it's a star or star system in a red lensed galaxy just here. The same team previously named another magnified star they found Godzilla, so it's nice they've kept this little theme going. I think it's pretty cute. Something pretty cool here is that Mothra is also visible in the Hubble image. This was actually quite unexpected, because it's a specific alignment between the star itself and the galaxy cluster that's doing the lensing that is needed for us to see it so brightly. The motions of these two things should eventually eliminate that alignment, so it's surprising to us that that hasn't happened yet, and we can see it in these images which are 9 years apart at this point. Maybe we just don't know enough about lensing or dark matter, and when we learn more it won't be so surprising. Or maybe there's some additional lensing happening within the foreground cluster, adding even more complication that we don't yet understand. Either way, it's a really interesting result to come out of this awesome image. I hope you enjoyed looking at this incredible galaxy cluster with me, and thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more content just like this, and you can leave me any questions or comments you have down below. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!